Have you ever started playing a game and you just hated it? You play it for maybe an hour or so and you're already telling your friends, people you vaguely know, that the game is shit. But then something compels you to give that game one more chance and you play it and all of a sudden you check the clock and realize you've lost three hours to it. You can still see the flaws, yeah, the many, many flaws, yet for some reason you find yourself loving that game now. Well, that's exactly my experience with Unbox Newbie's Adventure. I played for about half an hour, wrote up some notes because I knew I was going to do a video on it, and those notes contained all the piss, vinegar, and righteous fury I had in me. I didn't keep them because they are relevant now, but I did tell some of my clickest colleagues that the game was terrible, possibly even worse than Ukulele, and you all know how I feel about that game by now. But yeah, I went back and gave the game a second chance because I didn't want to shit on two games in a row in which I didn't get past the first level, and I gotta say, I'm feeling a lot more positive about the game now. I've still got some complaints, this is me we're talking about here, but I really did enjoy my time with Unbox, and that surprises me given how much I hated it when I started the game. What got me to change my mind, and why did I feel that way to begin with? Well... Unbox originally released on PC in September 2016, about a half a year before Ukulele. I've mentioned Platonic's game twice now, and with good reason. Unbox is a 3D platformer, but unlike Ukulele and many other 3D platformers as of late, Unbox isn't simply trying to replicate the feeling of older games in the genre. Instead, developer Prospect Games is trying something entirely new. The conceit is that you're a cardboard box, as are all the other characters in the game. You work for the Global Postal Service as an advanced self-delivering box, designed to save the fate of the company that made you. This isn't just a story thing, this is something that manifests itself in the gameplay. You see, I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but boxes don't tend to have legs, which are pretty integral to the platforming genre. These boxes aren't anthropomorphized, they're just regular cardboard boxes. I mean, the other boxes talk and have unique personalities, but other than that, they're just boxes. That means rather than walking around levels, you just kinda roll yourself around, and that is what sets this 3D platform apart from every other one on the market today. Since you're rolling and not walking, you gain momentum as you move along. But you're not a sphere either, you've got six sides just like any other box, so your movement is uneven. You'll have trouble going upstairs, and you'll take some jumps differently depending on what part of you is on the ground when you jump. Oh, and speaking of the jumping, that is where the uniqueness of the game really shines through. You can jump, it wouldn't be much of a 3D platformer if you couldn't, I'm looking at you, the last tinker, but it's a bit different here. As well as a box, you're also kind of a Russian nesting doll, full of five other boxes, each smaller than the last, and each containing you, pretty much. You have a basic hop that'll get you over the smallest obstacles, but if you really want to jump for realsies, you're going to have to unbox yourself. This means ejecting the next set of boxes out of yourself, giving you one less box to work with, but it'll also propel you forward. You're limited to how many of these jumps you can make by how many boxes you have, meaning you're effectively trading health for the ability to jump, although maybe that's not entirely accurate, as you don't die simply from jumping too many times. You just won't be able to jump anymore after five jumps until you find more boxes. This mechanic is exactly why I hated the game so much when I first played it. Unbox is all about momentum, both in how quickly you're rolling yourself along and how and when you decide to unbox. It's not enough to simply jump across a bottomless pit, you need the momentum from the movement as well as the right number of boxes in order to get across. Sure, you could simply unbox five times and propel yourself across a gap, but that'd be a waste of boxes. Instead, you want to get a good run up to a hole and then time your unboxing to use the least amount of boxes as possible. That way you can get across the next obstacle. The thing is though, I'm not sure if I made this clear yet, you're a box and not a ball so movement feels rough and uneven. I just couldn't get my head around the movement when I first played the game and was constantly falling down holes or having to use up all my boxes just to make one jump. It can sometimes be impossible to tell where you're going to stop. I'll work my way up to a ledge and when I try to stop, the box either keeps rolling over or teeters on one of its edges before falling off like the most dickish of slot machines. And the speed you can get up to, good god, I didn't know boxes could move so fast. You gain so much speed in this game when you first play, it's impossible to accurately judge jumps or where you're going to end up whenever you let go of the analog stick. But that was only part of Unbox's initial horrible first impression. 
The starting control scheme is atrocious. I was playing on the PS4 version, the one that just released, which is why I'm doing a video on it now, and the controls were a mess. Jump was on R1, Unbox was on X, and did I mention Jump was on R1? Who assigns Jump to R1? Luckily you are able to change the controls to something more traditional, but why does it start like that at all? Nobody but Total Biscuit likes having to mess around the options menu before they start playing. Oh, I thought the game had crashed when I was trying to go into the first level. I hit X to enter the level and nothing happened, it just sat there for a minute. Then I realized the game was still going, just that nothing happened. I then rolled around the opening world for a few minutes before realizing that I had to press a different button from what the game was telling me to. When I saw the button layout on the loading screen, it hit me. The UI doesn't update if you change the controls. For the entire game, the UI was constantly giving me wrong button prompts, and I had to at first figure out what the button was, and then remember that the rest of my playthrough. And that is one of the game's many glitches. It might as well be an ant farm in a bait shop by how buggy it is. Some of the missions are just flat out broken. This one, Tower Power 1, had me go to an area and hit a switch, easy enough. A platform came out of a tunnel nearby and it seemed pretty obvious I had to stand on the platform and go in the tunnel. But then the platform just stopped moving and I couldn't go inside the tunnel myself without dying. Of course the game bugged out again when I died and fell through the water. The objective arrow was pointing in a specific direction, but every time I tried to follow it, the game said I was out of bounds and reset me. I reset the challenge, and lo and behold, the platform was supposed to be moving back and forth. It just glitched out when it got stuck there. Another mission required me to kill 20 enemies, but only 19 spawned in, and I tried three times, going up and down the island, but there were only 19 enemies each time. Once again, I had to reset the challenge for it to spawn in the correct number of enemies. In the final world, I had to move around checkpoints to collect map data, but I fell into the water at one point and died, and then the game repeatedly spawned me under a platform in the water, and I was dying over and over again at the spawn point. Every time you die anywhere near that area during this challenge, which is a lot since it's surrounded by insta-kill water, you spawn in that same spot under the platform and have to restart. There are other smaller bugs that add up over time too. Your mission log activates every single time you interact with an NPC or read a signpost, so you have to keep manually turning it off. NPCs are often floating in midair, and there are frequent slowdowns that makes the already difficult jumping sections that much more of a challenge. The vehicles are the worst though, as they often end up stuck in corners or flying off the the road for no apparent reason. Yeah, there are vehicles in the game by the way. Look what happened here seconds after hopping into a jeep. I hit a building trying to move the camera, backed up a mountain with an enemy permanently trying to kill me underneath. These vehicle controls are the worst. You accelerate with the left stick, steer with the right, which also controls the camera so you can't see where you're going without crashing into everything. <sighs> okay. Now, I know it sounds like I hate this game and that I'm saying it's awful, but that was all the bad stuff, my initial first impression on why I hated the game. You can see why I didn't like it, and Unbox just screams, I'm a terrible video game at you when you first start playing. But once you get used to the momentum and the movement speed and the UI issues, you'll find that Unbox is actually a ton of fun, and I dare say even a great game? It's still full of bugs which do their best to ruin the experience and the missions are kind of crap, but let's talk about some of the things that I like in the game next, shall we? I love the feeling of momentum in this game. Whoa, dude, crazy, right? Like I said, I hated this feature when I first played the game. It was hard to get a handle on, and it wasn't what I was used to in 3D platformers. But when I stopped whining about it, pulled my head off my ass, and gave it a real shot, I found myself falling in love with it. The momentum, coupled with the unboxing mechanic, did take some getting used to, yes, but when I did, I had a huge smile on my face every time I made a jump, or just traveling around the levels exploring as I timed my jumps along with my movement speed. And these are massive levels to explore. 
There are only three of them, along with the hub world, but it's not really a short game. There's some great level design going on here. At first, it almost feels like the game is mocking you. In the first level, you start out by constantly dying by falling into the water because of momentum and the jumping, but when you do get used to those mechanics and, and the controls, it's incredibly satisfying to jump from one island all the way over to the next and to be able to go all the way around the ring of islands like a race as you unbox, slide yourself down hills, collect more boxes, and avoid obstacles. Each level has several well-hidden paths and extra areas where you can find collectibles or funny NPCs, and it's just as rewarding to find one of those secret areas or collectibles as it is getting around from one area to the next. You can really tell the levels were designed with the unboxing and momentum mechanics in mind, as you'll need to know when to unbox multiple times to skip certain sections, or when to go the harder route so you can get more boxes and position yourself in a more optical launching area so to speak. Some of the missions in the game even prevent you from unboxing, only letting you do a little hop, which means you can't just skip whole sections of the level, you need to be smart about where you're going to move. The themes of these levels aren't very inspired though, which is a shame considering how unique the rest of the game is. The hub world is an oil rig, which is alright, but then it goes to the generic tropical level, a generic winter world, and then a somewhat less generic Amazon level, but each level is open and you can go wherever you want at any time. That's one thing Unbox borrowed from Banjo-Kazooie, but unlike it and Ukulele, there is an optional feature that tells you where you're supposed to start missions. You're not left on your own to figure out where you're supposed to be going, or what you're doing, and that's one of the problems I had with Ukulele. However, you are free to turn it off if you prefer being dumb and blind, and I really did, actually. You see, the problem with Ukulele is that it's not fun to play, so you just want to do the missions and get it over with. In Unbox, the missions are just okay. I had the most fun ignoring them and just collecting all the collectibles. This is still a collectathon, so if you don't like those, then you probably won't like Unbox. But I love the freedom to just go wherever I want at my leisure and picking up all this useless crap like stamps and gold tape, and unlike Ukulele, where you absolutely had to collect all that stuff, you don't have to here. But there are, of course, rewards for doing it in the form of cosmetics. Yes, there's no bullshit paid DLC or microtransactions here for cosmetics. You have to earn them the good old fashioned way by collecting junk. You can change the look of your box itself, what clothes it wears, hats, and even facial hair, however that works. It's a great way of giving your box personality, because we're dealing with a silent protagonist here, and also rewarding you for exploring the game, which you're going to be doing anyway because the simple act of moving around is so much fun. The story isn't actually terrible either. It doesn't live up to the likes of Jack and Daxter or Sly Cooper, but it's certainly better than ukuleles. The Global Postal Service created a series of sentient boxes that were designed to deliver themselves, but the first units went rogue, so the GPS created more, and eventually you to stop them. You find out that there's something more going on here, but I won't spoil that alien technology for you. Oops. If there's one problem with the story, it's that at first it's super goofy and doesn't take itself too seriously, and unlike that platonic nightmare, it actually is pretty funny and charming at times. But as the story goes on, and especially at the end, the tone shifts and it suddenly becomes super serious and we need to save the world and yada yada yada. It's not a big deal because the plot itself isn't a big deal, but it does suck to see it fall into the trap that so many other comedies do, that it thinks it has to turn super serious at the end, otherwise people won't be invested or something. And then there are the other tiny things that still annoy me, like the boss battles. There are three boss battles in the game, each of them are drastically different from the last, but they're all still lame. The first is the age-old stand in a place and make the bad guy charge you, then move at the last minute so they run into a wall thing, except instead of running into a wall, they just fall off a platform. The next has you shooting fireworks at a helicopter, which is laughably easy, and the third has you fighting cardboard metal gear, which just means jumping around a giant circle and falling off pits a lot. And that's another big problem I have with the game, it's just too easy. I'm not one of those people that says every game needs to be super difficult and challenging. In fact, I prefer when games just kind of leave me alone and let me experience the story in the world, but this takes that too far. Every one of my deaths in the game came from falling down holes. Enemies never killed me once, including the bosses. The garden variety enemies usually only stun you, and at first I thought that's all they could do, but it wasn't until the third and final level that one of them actually took away some of my health. Since your jumps are tied to your health, I figured that would play a huge role in the combat, but it never does, and it really feels like they dropped the ball in that regard. Or should I say box? <laughs> 
No, I shouldn't. The game never really lives up to its potential because you get so many health pickups and the enemies don't really hurt you. So the only time you'll ever really die is by falling down a hole, which because of how much health you get thrown at, will only ever happen if you misjudge the timing of your unboxings. That's kind of the overall theme for Unbox Newbie's Adventure. It has a ton of potential thanks to the unique setting and gameplay mechanics, but the developers really didn't do anything with it. They didn't follow through. The enemies are pathetic, the missions are boring, the level themes are uninspired, the story falls apart at the end, and did I mention the numerous glitches? There's a hint system in the game to help you find collectibles, cycling between several scripted camera angles for each collectible, but most of the time the camera only points at some rocks or it even goes through the ground, which is so very helpful. Uh, I, it's not really related, I just had to point that out. I want to love Unbox, I really do. I had a ton of fun with this game at times, mostly when I was just blindly exploring levels. I love the idea of sacrificing health to make jumps and having to take momentum into consideration. It has a great, cute, fun atmosphere with interesting characters and great art design, and it's actually a lot of fun and really rewarding to track down all the collectibles. But there's just something that's holding it back. There are moments of greatness here, but those moments are always ruined either by a game-breaking bug or one of the boring missions that has you doing generic races or going into an enclosed room and doing a bunch of combat. Oh, I, I didn't actually mention combat earlier, did I? Uh, well, that's because it's crap. You just hit a button and you do this little ground pound thing. That's literally all there is to it. It feels like the developers stumbled onto a great idea when they came up with the unboxing mechanic and they made the world and the characters, but they didn't quite know how to follow through on all of it. So what we end up with is a game that has great moments, but isn't itself great. In fact, as you probably noticed throughout this episode, there's more bad than good. Maybe Unbox 2, if that ever happens, will iron out some of the kinks. I hope so. This is absolutely the kind of game that belongs in this From Indie With Love series. It has a lot of potential and it does some things better than most games. This is a 3D platformer trying to push the genre forward, not just waddle in its own dirty diaper of nostalgia. And that's exactly what I've wanted from these games for a long time now. Wow, hello! Nice to see you again. I know it's been a while since we uploaded a video here, but we are back, baby. One video a week, every single Wednesday from here on out. Or at least until I get bored and wander off again, whatever. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe for more, or donate to our Patreon page if you can. As always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.